and welcome to the Freakish Lemon video podcast. I am your host, the Freakish Lemon. I go by Adrian and I use masculine pronouns. Welcome any new viewers. Thank you so much for clicking on whatever you clicked on to get here and welcome back returning viewers. Thank you so much for joining me for another podcast episode. This is a crafty type podcast coming to you from the Northwest Hills of Connecticut and show notes for this episode and all episodes can be found on my website at freakishlemon.com or freakishlemonpodcast.com. They go to the same place. Um, there is a group on Ravelry for this podcast. Just search Freakish Lemon in the groups tab and you will find us and you can follow me at all the fun places as Freakish Lemon like Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, and Ravelry. Instagram and Tumblr are my playgrounds. They're very different playgrounds, but that's where you'll generally find me the most. Uh, and all the links to all these things will be in the down bar here on YouTube or somewhere around here if you're watching this somewhere else. And if you are here on YouTube and you want to follow along with what I'm doing, consider hitting that subscribe button. Um, it lets you know when a new episode is posted and it's part of the algorithm that helps me out. Um, I'm filming this on Sunday, January 28th. 2018 and we start these podcast episodes off with a little bit of podcast stuff. Um, this won't go too long but um, ongoing make-along, blanket make-along 2018 edition. Um, if you're working on a, bl on a blanket please consider joining. It's just encouragement and photos and progress on any blankets you are making, any craft at all, and there's a thread over in the Ravelry group for that. Uh, upcoming, we have a quilt along starting March 1st and going for six months using half square triangles. Um, I won't go into too much detail of it because I talked about it at length in the previous podcast episode, but I'll leave all the notes in the um, show notes so you can check those out. And um, in the upcoming weeks, I'll put up a thread on Ravelry. Um, with the details so that there's a centralized place that everybody can go to start talking about prep for the quilt along. Um, and then last episode I opened up a New Year's giveaway for a skein of Dynamics yarns, very generously donated to the podcast by Mars from the Hay Brown Berry Chronicles. She hasn't called her podcast that in a while. The Hay Brown Berry Podcast because uh, this is her um, hand-dyed yarn. It's on the Cash Lux base, which is a baby alpaca silk cashmere fingering weight in the A Tale of Two Seasons colorway, plus um, a stitch marker set from Critium Handmade, plus some uh, local soap samples that Mars picked out um, to send our way, and um, the prompt in the thread was 2018 plans, what your goals are, what you're planning on doing. Um, if you have anything like that, it's sorted out. And by random number generator, this prize is going to post number 19, MG Blue, or MGO Blue, sorry, who is Paula from Indiana. So congrats, Paula. Shoot me a message on Ravelry with your mailing address and I will get this prize package out to you get that out of my way now. Um, which moves us on to a little bit of life stuff. Finally got a haircut. Um, it's looking a little crazy because my hair always looks a little crazy just after it's been cut. Got it cut two days ago and it hasn't settled down yet. Um, it was much needed. My hair was way too long. Um, for me, because once it can fall into my mouth, it's a hassle. So, um, yeah, so these strands were all the way down here too long. Uh, but that also means that my hair is not used to being that short. So it's used to having weight, pull it down. And then when it gets cut, it does crazy things like this A little bit of ridiculousness. Um, but yeah, I finally got a haircut. Um, Oh my god, I'm getting such a glare off of this thing. I got a new Kindle Fire HD for my birthday on Friday. My parents were 
very generous in giving that to me. I don't know why I was just clapping there. Stop fidgeting so much. The fidget cube is not anywhere on hand. That's annoying. I bought a fidget cube and now I don't have it on hand to fidget with. Ugh. Good job, me. Um, but yeah, I'm trying my show notes out on the, um, the new Kindle Fire HD, uh, because my parents also bought me this handy little, um, case that has a keyboard, so it's kind of fun to play with, uh, but I'm getting a horrible glare out of this window over here, so, and it keeps going to sleep on me, so that's fun. Um, but yeah, birthday, haircut, and from you as you can see by the new podcast setup and if you follow me on Instagram I bought a new bed um I was sleeping on my childhood twin sized bed I decluttered enough in this room that I could buy myself a new bed a full size bed um and it's kind of giant I didn't realize the mattress was so incredibly fat it's like a like a big fat mattress it's ridiculous. Go check out my Instagram for a photo because I couldn't believe it when they brought it in, even though I saw it in the store. But, you know, when you see it in the store, they all kind of look the same because they're all the, you know, it's like 40 naked beds just in a room. And it's such an awkward experience buying beds, but um, I got a really good price on it uh, because hilariously, the sales guy used to be in the high school band with me. He was a year below me and... Um, so on top of the New Year's sale, I also got a friends and family discount because we were in band together. Um, and those things always crack me up because I feel like salespeople can use them pretty much when, whenever, but it was funny that we actually knew each other and <laughs> had been in the high school band together. Uh, ridiculous. It's funny because I went to a very small high school. My graduating class, uh, which at the time was the largest graduating class that they had ever had, was 116 students. Um, <laughs> and our band at its largest, I think, was 45 students. So it was super funny that sales dude at Mattress Farm was a member of my high school band. But other than that, work's been crazy, and that's it. I feel like I always say that work's been crazy, because work is always crazy, and it feels like this job never calms down. Um, so let's move on to the crafting stuff, because we don't need to listen to me ramble about work. Ever. So, um crafting stuff. Finished objects. I have one pair of finished objects. It's a pair of gray bulky mittens. Um, not the gray mittens I was and knitting, but these are bulky mittens that I knit on my Addy Express uh, professional circular knitting machine. Um, I used a tutorial from Yay for Yarn here on YouTube. Uh, I never make anything in bulky yarn, so it's kind of amazing to just like put these on and feel how thick they are. Um, but yeah, this is the type of gauge you would get with a bulky on the Addy Express uh, Pro, um, which is a 22 needle circular knitting machine and there's no way to adjust the tension except by the weight of your yarn. So a bulky weight yarn gets a pretty tight gauge, but if you were to put a worsted weight or anything lighter than that, you're going to get a pretty open um, fabric out of that knitting machine. But like I said, I used a tour tutorial from Yay for Yarn here on YouTube, which is a really great tutorial um, going into the basics of it how to ladder up a uh, rib if you've never done that before because um, there's no way to do the ribbing on the machine. You knit a bunch of rows and then you drop a column down and reform it with a crochet hook. Um, and she did a really good job of explaining when to use the circular function, when to use the flat function, and then 
how to pick up the thumb gusset with short rows. Um, my thumb gussets are a little clumsy because I'm not, I'm clearly not as familiar with this machine as she is. She has a whole bunch of Addy uh, Express Pro um, tutorials, but I don't think these turned out too bad for a first project on a circular knitting machine. Um, the tops, there's no decreases, it's just a gathered, um, a gathered finish, um, which, I mean, it's not uncomfortable to have the gathered finish up there, and I'm pretty impressed that I managed to get a pair of mittens that actually fits my hand. Like, the thumb is not way too long or way too short, and the hand is not way too long or way too short, which is usually what I end up doing with mittens, even hand knitting them. So that's fun. And this pair of mittens used, um, well, this is what I have left. So it was maybe one and one third skeins of bulky. This is Patton's classic bulky in dark gray heather. Um, so I had a good chunk left over. I don't know what I'll do with it, but that was a fun experiment, and I could definitely see making a few more pairs of mittens on that thing um, once I'm better at picking up the thumb gussets. Um, but yeah, that's my only finished object uh, for the time being. But And these were super quick. I did these in an evening after work like a Monday evening. So maybe two hours, just because I had to start and stop the tutorial. But if I had memorized what was happening prior to that, I probably could have done them in an hour. Um, they're super fast. And yeah, they're done entirely on machine, except for seaming the thumb, because you have to knit the thumb flat. Um, and just weaving in the ends. So super fun and probably a, a pretty good introduction into circular knitting machines if you're interested. I know there are because they're plastic machines and they don't have that many attachments or anything that they're a much more affordable way to dip your toe in the water um, than unless you know somebody with a, a proper circular sock knitting machine but that was fun, and I look forward to playing with it some more. Uh, which brings us to works in progress. I've got a lot of stuff here. I've been playing around with a lot of stuff. I have been working on my weaving project. I finished the fifth panel, which is a warp with this blue yarn hand dyed by a vendor at the New York Renaissance Fair. And the weft, the horizontal weaving, um, is with Once Upon a Corgi yarn uh, in the S-O-R-E colorway, which is a series of Unfortunate Events Club colorway. This is approximately six feet long. None of these panels are as of yet the same length, um, but most of them are finished with just waste yarn on the end so I can even them out later. I'm having a lot of fun with weaving right now. Um, yes. Um, and I'm really excited to try a bunch of weaving things because Grace from Babel's Traveling Yarns has been playing around with weaving and she's been doing more with patterns and things, which I definitely want to play around with now that I've seen her do it. And now that I've, <laughs> I think now that I've um, really developed my warping skills, I'll be doing a lot more weaving because um, that was something that was frustrating me previously. Um, and why I didn't really get into weaving when I first got my loom is because I was not great at warping the loom, but now I'm better at it. It's a lot more fun. And I've started, or I'm about halfway through the last panel of my color block project, and that is warped with a green yarn that was hand dyed by me 
and I'm weaving that with some more Once Upon a Corgi yarn um, in the Series of Unfortunate Events Club Colorway uh, Murderer Attempts to Murder Murderer, <laughs> which is one of my favorite names for yarn ever. Um, I've also been working on my hand spun striped sweater on my LK150 mid range knitting machine, mid gauge knitting machine. Sorry. Bleh. Lost where my words were going. Uh, I'm doing the Tremontaine sweater by Amy Herzog using the custom fit um, method uh, because you can get a really uh, even gauge on a knitting machine, so you. I feel like you don't need that big of a swatch. Um, and that's with um, black Classic Elite Mohawk, Classic Elite Yarns Mohawk Wool, and my own hand spun out of some Corydale Finn Rambouillet uh, mixed wool. Um, I'm nearly done with the ribbing for the front piece of the sweater. And once I'm done with the ribbing there, it won't be long before I have that piece finished. Um, Cause I did the back piece in about eight hours. So hopefully I can finish that ribbing soon. Um, I did cross the halfway point yesterday and it seems to go a lot faster once you're past the halfway point of ribbing on a piece like a sweater size. I don't feel like it takes that long for me to do the ribbing on sleeves on the machine, but um, the LK150 is a single bed uh, machine, so there's no ribber attachment. You have to do the ribbing, either knit it by hand and put it on the machine or ladder it up um, by you know dropping a column of stitches and then laddering it back up the other way. Um, to get ribbing, which, you know, you've got a strip of black ribbing on your machine. It's not the most fun process to start. Once you get past the halfway point, it tends to go a lot quicker. So I'm hopeful that um, I'll be um, done with that in the next day or two. So then I can just knit the rest of the front piece of the sweater. And then I have been practicing my free motion quilting. I showed you last episode that I had done grids on a whole bunch of practice squares. And I think I even showed you this first practice square with the triangles and how uneven my curves were and all that fun stuff. I don't remember if I had done no, I showed this on Instagram. I don't think I showed it on the last podcast. Well, this was the second grid square and you can see I still have problems with my curves, um, but you can see the lines are a lot smoother and I did end up able to do some flourishes that don't look too bad, just fooling around on the machine. Like you can see, that's not the best squiggle, but like these little curly cues are pretty good. And a lot of those curves are a lot smoother. And then I did this square with a just straight grid. And you can see, again, they're not the best curved lines, but the stitching is more even and it is getting smoother and I was able to get in some practice with some swirls which are not the best but you know they're recognizable as swirls and some just other pieces of designs played with a feather there uh, that didn't work out I'm just playing around in my machine quilting but it's starting to look more even and controlled which is good And then I did this one the other day. You can see my curves are getting a lot smoother and more even, which is fantastic. So I started playing with some other curves, some bigger curves, corner to corner, 
which are looking pretty okay. Um, filling in those sections isn't my forte. Um, I still have some, I'm not the best at close quilting. My control on those curves is not great, but I am practicing and playing around and there's definite improvement. And because there was improvement on that square, I pulled out a diamond square and started doing, I don't remember what these are called. I don't think these are the ones that are called ribbon candy. I think they're called something else. But I started playing around with these since I was getting practice with fine tuning the smaller curves. It seems like I'm, I'm decent at the wider curves now but getting those smaller curves, like some of these look really good, like this one looks pretty good, but some of them are a little bit janky. You could tell like right there, I was like, well, that's not gonna work. Let's just go to the next one. There's a couple of those in this diamond pattern. Um, and then I've got one on the machine now. I just put the needle down and stopped in the middle of it because um, I was getting frustrated where I was playing with feathers and ferns and I am not good at feathers or ferns. Um, but I am putting the practice in, which is uh, good. Because the more practice I can get in now, the less likely I am to do something really awful on an actual quilt top. Um, and this, these squares are using concepts from the Craftsy class, Quilting the Grid, Structured Free Motion with Christina... I can't tell if that's Carnelli or Camelli uh, with this font on here. But it's, you'll be able to find it on Craftsy or I'm sure she's got other resources elsewhere um, for quilt, free motion quilting in a grid. Um, definitely something to check out if you are interested in learning free motion quilting. And then over the last few days I have been working on cutting the pieces for my winter wall quilt which is the quilt that I've had planned for a while. Let me show the book. This is from uh, The Weekend Quilter. Fabulous quilts to make in a weekend edited by Rosemary Wilkinson. It's a Reader's Digest collection and this is the winter wall quilt this is a twin size all the quilts in here are about twin size quilts but i did some math and um figured out how many rectangles i would need for a larger quilt because i was planning on having this quilt finished before i bought the bed but timing didn't work out so i finally cut out all the pieces for this quilt. Now this is a quilt entirely, um, oh, that's not a good piece. I'm gonna have to cut out another piece of something to replace that one, but <laughs> I'm sure I'll find more of these. But all of this is old scrap fabric and also old clothes. Like there's a lot of old jeans that I wore through and could not be repaired or donated. Um, and there's an old shirt, an old work shirt that I took apart because I wore through the seams down both elbows because I roll up my sleeves and just busted through the seams on them and the fabric, by the time I noticed it, the fabric had frayed enough that I couldn't patch them up couldn't be donated so other than that one rectangle that I just found on camera just now I have all the pieces needed so I can start laying it out and getting the quilt piece topped this quilt I'm going to be um, tying which is why you saw in this box some embroidery floss and these curved um, quilting needles um, I've never done a tie quilt before, but, um, 
I feel like that's a good way for me to quickly finish this quilt and not kind of hesitate with the actual quilting of this quilt because it's going to be bigger than the other quilts that I have made and um, I'm gonna need this quilt in a timely fashion because once it gets warm out I can't have the wool blankets on this bed it <laughs> it will be crazy and I don't want to buy a comforter when I'm making a quilt so tie quilts probably the best route for me to go to get that finished and finished well in a timely manner. I also was doing some spinning and I have finished the singles for the mystery fleece. I don't remember the last time I talked about the mystery fleece on here but it was a fleece that I got or it was actually two fleeces that I got really cheap from a local farmer but she doesn't know what the breed of the sheep are because they're rescue sheep um, and I have three storage bobbins of singles plus two bobbins from my hitchhiker wheel of singles and this one I clearly have to like pick some veg out of here I'll do that right now while I'm looking at it Just throw that on the floor to be vacuumed later so I have five total bobbins of mystery fleece singles I'm going to wait to ply them uh, because I like to ply on my Ashford Kiwi 2 which currently has my Cormo sweater spin still on it. So um, I'm going to rest up my hands and when they're up to spinning I will be making my way through the rest of those singles so then I'll just be in Ply City for a while um, which will be good. And then I've also been putting in some time on cross stitch as something to do while watching TV. Um, for me, it's easy to pick up and put down uh, for when my hands are overtired. So I have been making a lot of progress. Oops, my thing fell asleep. There we go. This is the Orabesh sampler, which is from the shop Ad Leones on Etsy, which I believe is um, not open at the moment. But it's an alphabet sampler with the um, English alphabet and Orabesh, which is the alphabet for Galactic Basic in the Star Wars universe. It's got, you know, ships and symbols and all sorts of fun stuff. And for this entire portion of it, it looks like nothing was happening. So once I got down and could do another corner, it I kind of flew through the rest of it. There's still some stuff that's missing here, but it'll be easier for me to put that stuff in place once the rest of like that line is finished and I can see where things need to go. So very exciting that I'm making progress on that. So lots of works in progress and lots of different crafts right now trying to bounce from thing to thing so that my hands don't get overtired doing a singular thing repetitively uh, which is how I injured my hands in the first place. Um, so that's all my works in progress so now we're going to go on to new stuff which is going to be a lot of new stuff for the first time in a while um, just because it was my birthday and also um, I got some stuff from Gabby from Once Upon a Corgi um, so the first couple things I'm going to show you are Once Upon a Corgi um, because we are siblings we do a lot of swap stuff so this is my sweater quantity of Isaac DK in the colorway Narnia. It smells good. Oh, it's so good. It looks so good on camera. So this is going to be a sweater, probably a cabled sweater. Um, 
possibly done on the knitting machine, depending on when I get to the sweater, sweater's quantity of yarn. Um, but, um, yeah, uh, <laughs> since we're siblings, we swap things. So this was something that I got from her, which is brilliant, um, for, um, I know one of the skeins is to cover the cost of some specialty honey that I bought at a Renaissance fair, um, because there's a seller at the Pennsylvania Renaissance fair, the bee folks, they have a killer bee honey and they also, they all have a bunch of different flavored honeys. So I got a couple of those and one of these is to cover the cost of that, but swapping services and goods because we're siblings and that's the currency of siblings is favors and swaps. And then she also dropped off um, some Once Upon a Corgi scraps. So what these will become, there's this one. These are all partial skeins from stuff that she's made out of her yarn. And these will become a weaving sample for her shop. Is there more? Uh, that didn't work. Oh, goodbye, little skein of black yarn. Uh, yeah, here's one more. This, this one, I want to say this is Libraries. I'm not sure which one this is. This one is Moon of My Life, I think. Not sure what this one is. And I'm not sure what this one is. Um, but they will be labeled at some point because they're going to be a shop sample for her for what her yarns look like woven. And I've got some um, some of my leftovers. I have some frosted cranberries. I've got a couple of um, series of unfortunate events club colorways of extras that I'm going to do. And what I'm going to do for a shop sample is um, warp my loom half with black yarn and half with white yarn so that you can see how these yarns weave up with a light weft or a light warp and a dark warp um, because that changes how they look on the loom um, but I figured black and white would be the easiest demonstration of what they could look like in a weaving project um, and I'm basically going to make her a big, long sample scarf um, with a bunch of extras. And um, at some point we will label them uh, so that when she has it up in her booth, you can see which ones look like what. Um, so it's an acquisition, but I, it's not a permanent acquisition type thing, um, but definitely fun to play with um, because we were both really interested to see how her yarns would weave up. There's not a lot of that I've seen people weaving with um, indie dyed yarns just because I feel like there are fewer weavers in the podcasting realm. Um, so we're going to play around with that and see what that kind of, uh, sample looks like. And we'll probably collaborate more, um, with the knitting machines that I keep acquiring, um, and her yarns to, to do up shop samples for that too. Um, so I may end up with more leftover bits. <laughs> um... And then on my birthday, I had to go to Joanne Fabrics because I had an expiring coupon that was 30% off total purchase. And uh, I needed some bits and bobs for um, the quilt for my bed, the winter wall quilt. And I made the mistake of going into the clearance fabric section of Joanne Fabrics. And I walked out with three fabrics. I walked out with this polka dotted fabric gray with white and black polka dots and a kind of mustardy yellow 
dot, big polka dots. I just took what was left on the bolts. It was maybe two yards. Um, but quilting's my jam right now, so it's not like I'm not going to use it. And then I got a yard of this fabric, um, orange with white um, stag heads. And then I still can't believe I found this because I didn't know that they made fabric for this TV show, but it's the Star Wars Rebels TV show. I found this fabric, which I did not know existed. And I always check the Star Wars fabric whenever I'm in Joann's in the clearance. So I bought what was left of the bolt. And I got a little over three yards of it. So, uh, <laughs> yes, um, I love it. I love it. I love how many characters they fit on here too. Because if you're familiar with Star Wars Rebels, I mean, we've got Hera, who's my favorite. Chopper, the Inquisitor, Ezra, Zeb, and Kanan, a random stormtrooper, and Sabine. Like, that's everybody, plus a couple of randoms. Like, that's it. I love it. I love it. So I had to get it. And then, uh, because it was my birthday and I wanted to go exploring, I went to a quilt shop in New Hartford, Connecticut, um, which isn't terribly far away from me. It's maybe 40 minutes. Um, I ended up taking a really roundabout way to get there because I was just out for the day. But um, I went to this quilt shop in New Hartford, which is a great quilt shop and they do have long arm machine rental time so it's a goal to learn long arm quilting I don't know if they have lessons I didn't really linger because I just kind of new environment wanted to look at all the things buy something and leave um, but it's an option for me to go learn long arm quilting if they do offer lessons and if not then it'll be like oh all right tell me how to set up this machine and i'll learn it myself um but i i did walk out of there with some things i bought some oops wake up bought some charm packs because charm packs like mini skeins do not count against stash okay <laughs> There's no waste for charm packs. If you're doing squares and half square triangles and a quilt, there's no waste. So you will not have leftovers. So I bought these two packs of Moda fabric, um, Hope's Journey 1830 to 1860 by Betsy Chuchian. Um, and these are gonna go in a gift quilt. Um, but they're really lovely fabrics and I got two of them to make sure I had enough and these will probably be half square triangles with neutrals. I have to sneeze again. Oh no. Ugh. Okay. And then I saw these and I was like, well, I'm not walking out of the store without some of these. And there are these little two and a half inch charm packs by Moda. So I got Spooky Delight, which is Halloween fabrics. Those little bats. Pumpkins. How could I not get Halloween fabric? <laughs> and then to go with that, I got um, Composition, which is uh, typed I'm just getting little fabric bits all over the place little typed fabrics I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see that but these are tiny little squares and I suppose I could open them since I have to wash them anyway I'm putting these ones in a garment bag so they don't get lost so let's I think there's some music notes and they're all like light gray and that's just graph. And some numbers. So 
I better look at these Halloweenies. I love Halloweenies. Some pumpkins, some curly cues. I love charm packs. They're so fun. Well, those are owls. I thought they were bats. I was only looking at them in the camera. so fun and I also bought these um, two and a half inch Moda what's it called modern background ink which is like the the darker counterpart to the composition they were kind of paired together in the shop as contrasts so these types of fabrics and I'll probably show them more on Instagram once I am um, wash them and iron them and get them all out on the table so that I can see what they look like. So that's super fun and definitely a shop I'm going to go back to in the future. Um, they have so much fabric in that store. It's not that big of a store. Uh, I'd say it's probably around the size of the um Torrington Yarn Store, which is in sheep's clothing. Um, but yeah, great little quilt shop. And they do have fiber in there too. Um, there's a section for um, spinning and felting fiber, which is super cool. I did not go into that corner because I knew I would lose my mind. Um, so <laughs> I just stuck to Losing my mind over charm squares. Um, and that's it for new stuff. For now. <laughs> I have new toys to go with my knitting machine coming that I've ordered. Um, which I'll show when they get here and I've played with them. So for now, we're going to move on to other stuff. Stuff I am watching. Uh, I wanted to talk about this one first so I didn't forget, but I watched this short film, horror film, called The Birch, which was super creepy and awesome. Like, um, it's very Guillermo, Guillermo del Toro-esque, like, in the Pan's Labyrinth vein of horror, um, but it's basically a bullied cat a bullied kid invokes a forest demon that's a really creepy birch lady. It's pretty fantastic. Um, there's some really great creepy camera work in this little short film, and I highly recommend you check it out if you're into horror. Um, super great. And then I saw The Greatest Showman at the movies the other day, um, which was pretty good. Uh, the music was good. The dancing was good. The story was nothing special. It was entirely predictable, even if you don't know anything about P.T. Barnum. But just the way it's laid out, it's what you expect. Um, but I had a good time with it. And then I have finally started season two of The Crown. Finally. That show is so good. I love that show. Um, hopefully gonna watch some more of it today. Um, possibly even while working and stuff because I have my new Kindle Fire so I can watch it in my craft room. Um, and then I finally finished up the um, current season of Rebels up until the, the latest episode, which is episode 9, I think. And it's coming back in February. So finally caught up on Rebels. Um, I love that show. I love that show. <laughs> they're, they're doing very Star Wars Extended Universe things in that show. Which just like warms my heart. Because, you know, when Lucasfilm was acquired by Disney, they made the announcement that the Extended Universe was no longer canon as if it was ever canon before because there's like six different backstories for every major character um 
but it, it's very reminiscent of the extended universe stuff, especially in these latest seasons with Ezra kind of coming into his force powers. It's super delightful. And then stuff I'm listening to finally caught up on Aos 10, um, which I had just stopped listening to halfway through. I don't know why that happened, but finally finished that up. And then on recommendation from one of you guys, I started listening to the Hand E Knitting Machine podcast, or Handy Hand E Machine Knitting podcast. I got that all discombobula discombobulated. Um, but it's an audio podcast about knitting and machine knitting, and I'm really having a good time listening to it right now. I love... It's a great resource if you're interested in learning more about machine knitting because uh, the host, whose name I've forgotten because I'm terrible with names, um, is a very adamant defender of machine knitting and how we should play with all the toys available to us <laughs> uh, for our craft because it's fantastic. Um, so I'm having a good time and she has some really great uh, resources. Um, she has a section where she talks about different resources available. Um, so that's fun. I need to check out some of those so I can make the most out of machine knitting, which is in the forefront of my brain right now. And then stuff I'm reading. I finished... I don't remember if I talked about this one on the last podcast episode or not, but I did finish The Last of the Jedi Book 4, Death on Naboo. Um, which ends with a heck of a cliffhanger. And I have started, I'm not very far in, to book number five, A Tangled Web. But clearly from the cover, old palps is uh, going to get involved officially. Um, I love Star Wars books. Um, and then I've also been reading on my breaks at work um, on my Kindle Touch, um, the book Dreams from the Witch House. I have talked about this book previously on this podcast, but it has been a very long time since I talked about it. Uh, Dreams from the Witch House... Um, is a compilation of short stories that was put together in an Indiegogo campaign by Dark Regions Press. And it is um, H.P. Lovecraft related short stories um, using his monsters, his settings, his weirdness um, in short stories written by women. Um, and these are really, really good. Um, there's one in here... Um, as a kind of, I don't remember what it's called. I'm doing really good with this, you guys. But there's one in here related to the Shadow Over Innsmouth short story by H.P. Lovecraft, which is uh, Fish People, um, a Fish People story. And it's the repercussions of a Shadow Over Innsmouth where the town was destroyed and the... Uh, descendants of those people who are promised everlasting life in the service of Dagon. Um, dream of the sea and what they do and and what happens to those who aren't mutated enough to be able to live beneath the sea. It's really, really good. Um, there's some really good short stories in there, and I'd hi I'd really recommend it if you have even the slightest interest in Lovecraft. The these stories are, frankly, uh, by today's standards, better than Lovecraft's writing. <laughs> um, Lovecraft can be a bit of a slog because he was paid by the word, so he is quite verbose. But these are compelling and fresh and horrifying and interesting. It's really, really cool. And the light is changing, so there's weirdness coming out of this window over here. Um, and then, of course, I've been reading fanfic. Uh, all Star Wars fanfic that I'm going to talk about today. Um, I've got one new one and some K-1 
ketchup that I've been doing. So the new one I'm talking about is a fic called Masquerade by Harpalis. I'm not sure how you pronounce that username. Um, but the summary is, a redeemed Vader strives to reconcile his past actions while trying to save Luke from the Emperor's grasp and helping the Rebel Alliance and struggles to simply survive. Post Return of the Jedi alternate universe. So while the second Death Star is being destroyed, the Emperor escapes with Luke in custody and has him drugged to compliance and um, susceptible to mind control. While Vader is captured by a faction of rebels um, led by Ahsoka Tano and he is detoxed his prosthetics are repaired and or upgraded into something that functions uh, as improved quality of life because we know the Emperor didn't really care <laughs> about how functional Vader was as long as he's scary and will kill you. Um, and they healed him up as best they could so they regrew skin for parts of his face and um, regrew some some lung tissue. They couldn't, you know, do that many repairs. He was crispy. Crispy. Anakin Skywalker. Um, but we're basically able to to make him capable of living and just kind of let him free to make his own choices. And out from under the Emperor's control knowing that Luke has been captured, he wants to save his son and he's also committed to making better choices even though he has, you know, he's still trying to work through the cycle of his previous life mindset. So his first inkling is to just, you know, murder everyone but he's actively working on changing those decisions and how he's viewing people and trying to help. And it's really, really good. And I think it's a an interesting take on where he would be because he's starting from the bottom. New name, new identity, living in the slums trying to get the attention of the Rebel Alliance without getting too much of their attention <laughs> and without alerting the Imperials. It's really, really good. And then I've been playing catch up with a couple of series that I had just, it was too overwhelming for me to figure out where I was in those series and I ended up rereading a bunch of them um, from beginning to the current chapter. Um, so I was catching up with I Guess I'll Know When I'll Get There by Esage 5. Um, that's the alternate universe where the Rogue One crew is incorporated into the original trilogy. Um, and Bodhi Rook and Luke Skywalker end up falling in love and developing a relationship. And the latest chapter has reached the end of Empire Strikes Back. And it feels like we're on the cusp of Luke telling Bodhi that Darth Vader is Anakin Skywalker, which is, which will be such an impact in this fic because Bodhi Rook looked up Anakin Skywalker because he wanted to give Luke something because Luke felt like he had lost everything after the Death Star exploded and, and Ben was gone and his aunt and uncle were gone. He couldn't go home and he felt adrift and Bodhi knows what that feels like because Jedha was pretty much destroyed. And, and, and as, as part of that fic, he uh, looked up Anakin Skywalker and he wanted to give Luke a piece of his family history. So they went to um, pod racing circuits because he found out that Anakin Skywalker won the Boonta Eve Classic. So they went to pod racing circuits and were just like flying around <laughs> because the pod races hadn't been active in a very long time, but, and we're on the cusp of Bodhi finding out that Anakin Skywalker did not die at the end of the Clone Wars, that he is in fact Darth Vader, 
and Luke's dealing with his new hand and all that. It's such a good fic. Such a good fic. And I've caught up on the Witness Me series by S.L. Walker. This is an alternate universe where Darth Maul, after he was cut in half, was captured instead of dying in the pit there. He comes back in the Clone Wars with robot legs and crazy. Um, but in this fic series, he's captured by the Jedi Order and just kind of kept there. They give him robot legs because, like, ethically they can't leave him unable to, like, the healers are like, no, we have to Im at least give him a decent quality of life, even if he is imprisoned under here forever. And a part of that fic is uh, Obi-Wan's kind of journey with his grief and anger at Maul, and then how that changes as he gets to know Maul and how Maul became who he is and their developing tumultuous interesting relationship. Um, we are into the Clone Wars now in this series um, where General Kenobi has been given permission to have the prisoner Maul as part of his crew uh, ost ostensibly he's there as a bodyguard to make sure Kenobi doesn't get himself killed um, but Obi-Wan's pulling whatever strings he can manage to give Maul even a semblance of freedom and um, in the series that's going on now Maul is in charge of basically an elite commando squad called the Blackbirds and how that group is forming and it's super interesting and delightful um, and then I've caught up on For the Right Price by Shay Tian, which is the alternate universe where in order to save Qui-Gon from dying, Obi-Wan uses the dark side to save him, and then the Jedi Order is like, nope, you're gone, goodbye. It, one strike, you're out. And he has to try to, um, make his way in the universe, kind of self-discovery fic, but we're starting to get into him putting together the pieces of what's going on behind the scenes of what was going on with the Trade Federation and why they were invading Naboo in the first place and how the Sith got involved. So he's starting to meddle and there's some great Count Dooku stuff going on now. Super great. And there's a new sarcastic droid friend because you can't be a Star Wars without a sarcastic droid friend. And D6 is one of my favorites thus far of sarcastic droid friends. He is a Trade Federation battle droid that was on Naboo um, that was scrapped and Obi-Wan bought him and put him back together or put it back together. Neutral object pronouns for D6. D6 does not believe in gender. Um, and it's <laughs> it's so sarcastic and delightful. I love it. <laughs> and then recently, um, the Dangers of Foresight series updated. Um, this is by DA's Obi Quiet. Um, this is the one where after his death, Darth Vader is thrown back into the past to relive his life and make better choices, but he's thrown back to his nine-year-old self. So nine-year-old Anakin Skywalker has the brain of uh, recently redeemed Darth Vader. And, um, we're getting into some major plotting against Sidious at this point, and the longer Anakin tries to hide that he's a time-traveling Sith Lord, uh, the more people figure out that he's a time-traveling Sith Lord, so we're getting into some really fun stuff with that fic now. It's really exciting. And that's really gonna do it for this episode. Lots of fanfic. Lots of different works in progress. Um, but yeah, that's coming to the end of the episode. Um, man, I love fanfic. Now I want to reread all of these. But um, yeah, so that's going to do it for this episode. I'm sure you've 
you're tired of listening to me ramble at this point. So show notes and everything are over at freakishlemon.com, which has the links to all the things I've been talking about, um, including all the fanfics if you want to read them. Uh, you can come join me at the Freakish Lemon podcast group on Ravelry. Just search Freakish Lemon in the groups tab. You can follow me as Freakish Lemon at all the fun places like Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, and Ravelry. And the links to all these things are in the down bar. And before you leave this episode, if you want to know when the next episode is going to happen, click that little subscribe button on YouTube. We'll let you know when a new episode is posted. Um, but that's going to do it for now. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.